god. Oh my god. Ugh. Hello, it has been a hot minute, but um, I wanted to come back on here and make a video all about the books I've been reading recently for the first little part of 2021. I've been able to actually read a lot more than I thought I would. I have a pretty busy semester, but still I've managed to read 11 books already, which is really great and definitely more than I thought I would. But um, I wanted to just kind of share the books with you because they've been a wide range of books. Even the ones I didn't really like, there were still like things to be gained from them. So yeah, I just wanted to share. Um, obviously Texas is just now thawing from its like major ice storm. Um, I still don't have running water and I haven't had running water for about five days, so life is great, but you know, it's fine because with the ice storm, my university canceled all of our classes last week, so that just gave me more time to read. So we're just looking at the positive, trusting that the water is going to come on at any minute, and in the meantime, we are just reading a lot. So the first book I read this year was Skinny Legs and All by Tom Robbins. Uh, Tom Robbins is one of my friend's favorite authors, so when I was at Half Price Books and saw this, I knew I had to pick it up because she would be mad at me if I didn't. Um, and so basically, it's hard to describe what this book is about because um, he sort of uses his books as a way to talk about a variety of kind of different issues or topics and everything. So like this book deals a lot with the Western perception of the Middle East and the idea of like, is what is art, what makes art art, what makes good art good art, all of that, who's deciding that, as well as like religion and kind of the cult aspect of religion. He kind of talks about all of that in this book. Um, and it's very unlike anything I've ever read before because Robbins, he was a really big part of the psychedelic revolution in the um, 60s. And you can really tell like reading his books is in its own way, like a psychedelic experience because the way he, describes things and the words he uses are just kind of like just out there in a way and um I want to try to find like an example let's see so yeah like here's like the first two sentences of the book this is the room of the wolf mother wallpaper the toadstool motel you once thought a mere folktale a corny obsolete rural invention so I don't know if those two sentences are doing it justice but basically it's very uniquely written and definitely different than anything I'd ever read before. Uh, I definitely found the first like third or so of this book to be a bit slow. There's it kind of starts with this road trip aspect and once the road trip is over there's like a, a time jump and I feel like after that time jump is really when the book starts going but still it was a really interesting read and really unlike anything I've ever read before. So I think I ended up giving this one like four out of five stars. All right the next book I read is The Sound and the Fury by William Faulkner. Um, this is like, you know, one of those classics that a lot of people have to read for school, but I, it never came up for me. So, um, simply put, this book is about the Compson family and sort of these like multiple generations of the Compson family and how horrible they are to each other and how kind of messed up they are. Um, and each section of the book is kind of told from a different point of view, but the book is very difficult to understand, at least at first because it kind of thrusts you into the mindset of their thoughts basically. And the thoughts are not really coherent or linear, or in some cases like there will be 50 pages and not an actual sentence is said, it's just all these little fragments. And so you really have to decipher everything from that. But it's also really interesting because in each chapter, you're going through these different timelines and you know you are but you don't really know when anything is happening you don't know why people are upset you just know that they are and it's it can be really confusing because there are like characters that have the same name but are totally different and it's important that you know how they're different um but still it was really interesting and at the end there's like an appendix so you kind of read like 200 or so pages of the story that you can barely understand and then you get an appendix that tells you basically everything that happened to the characters and after that, I think it takes on like a whole new layer because then you can go back and read, especially like the first 70 pages, which are really difficult to get through. You can read that and kind of finally understand what's happening. And after that, things become a lot more like really heart wrenching. And so I enjoyed it a lot and I'm glad I read it, but I will say like the overall 
process of reading it wasn't always super fun so I gave this one a four out of five as well. All right the next book I read I actually don't have with me but it was um called Matisse and it was part of the like Volkmar Essers art collection. Uh, I bought this book as, as a Christmas present for one of my friends but then it took us a while before we could actually hang out and exchange gifts so one day I was like oh you know it's pretty it's, it was a really short book so I figured I could just read it see what it's about because I didn't know like a lot about Matisse beyond seeing a few of his paintings and it wasn't what I was expecting I thought it would be more of like a biographical account of his life and just kind of include some pieces of his art but it was definitely more of like an art critic's perspective so he was going through the author was going through the different paintings and kind of explaining how this color is representative of this and kind of just picking apart and close reading all of the paintings which in its own way was interesting but it wasn't quite what I was looking for and what I thought I was getting so I ended up giving that a three out of five stars. All right the next book I read was Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. Um, this obviously is a really popular show on HBO and I love that show. It follows the community of this small town and particularly these um, five women who are some of them are friends some of them are kind of enemies and in the show it takes place in California in the book it takes place in Australia but it there's a new mother who comes into the community and her presence and especially some things that her child does sort of shakes things up and then there's also like a murder mystery aspect to it because we know someone has died and so it's told in flashbacks kind of leading up to the murder it was really interesting it was a really fast read even though it's like you know almost 500 pages i got through it in a few days because it's a really just good page turner i would definitely say that i preferred the show more i think the show sort of elevates the material a bit. Um, I think the book definitely read more as like something to pass like really boring suburban days in if that makes sense but um, it was still really good still really enjoyable and it definitely dealt with a lot of really important themes that I think a lot of books that are just meant to be like murder mystery page turners don't always address so this book talks about sexual assault, about motherhood, about um, domestic violence and kind of the different forms that that takes so it was a really really interesting book but um i would definitely say i still prefer the show to the book but again still good four out of five stars the next book i read was how to worry less about money by john armstrong this is um not exactly a budgeting book it's more talking about our perceptions of money as a society and kind of the different ways that we view money beyond just like a means of exchange and I really like this this was my first like five star read of the year because as someone who can often kind of get in my head about money and even if I have like objectively enough to like meet my basic needs I can get in these sort of like catastrophizing situations where I just keep on thinking I don't have enough and so this book kind of talks about that and talks about the different ideas we have related to money and why those came to be whether they are like society conditioned or family conditioned and just kind of showing us how we put too much emphasis on money and we kind of make it this status symbol or like this thing to be attained when in reality money should be like more of a means to an end to help us kind of reach our potential and so i really enjoyed this i found it really refreshing from the usual like you know don't buy lattes books because you'll save money this went a lot more into like how money should be used to kind of fulfill your higher purpose and not how you just need to get a lot of money so then you won't feel worried about it because that never really works out so this was five out of five for me next book i read was chronicle of a death foretold by gabriel garcia marquez it's, um it's super super short it's like barely over 100 pages but it follows um this man who goes back to his hometown to investigate the murder of someone that happened like decades prior and what made this murder really interesting is that the entire town knew it was going to happen and no one stopped it and so it's very as with like anything that Marquez writes it's like really beautifully written and like there are some sentences that like I can't believe that a human person thought this up because they're just so well put together and even though it is so short he does such a good job at making these characters they feel so authentic immediately 
and it leaves like a punch even though like you can finish this in a matter of a couple of hours it sticks with you in a really really incredible way so this was five out of five for me the next book i read then was the help by katherine stockett um this I'll be honest, when I was like 13, I would watch the help, like the movie with Emma Stone. I watched that so many times and it was like one of my favorite movies when I was that age. And so um, I was really curious about the book and I thought maybe I would really like the book as well. However, I will say reading the book and if I watch the movie again, it's been a few years since I've seen it, but if I watch the movie again, I may have the same feelings where it definitely deals, in my opinion, too lightly with the themes it's talking about as related to race and class and sexism like especially as related to race it portrays a very kind of disney-fied and simplified view of it in my opinion and it just made me sort of uncomfortable at parts like and there is definitely like talent in Catherine stock it's just like ability to write because um it's like 500 pages but it's really well paced like i never felt like it was too long but I think just the subject matter she chose to deal with was not um, well fleshed out and well realized because I just think everyone kind of gets off a little too easily and all of the characters are sort of easily drawn and that's just not like the reality of the situation. And I think like one of the kind of best examples I can give of sort of there being a disconnect between I think what she was trying to do and what she did. There's this one character named um, Abelene and she is, for all intents and purposes like the main character of the book and at one point um someone remarks how eloquent she is because she writes something down and this character goes on and on about how eloquent abelene is and how beautifully written it is and how she doesn't even like she was meant to edit what abelene wrote but like she has nothing to even edit like it's so beautifully put yet every single section from abelene's perspective is told in a very like stereotypical african-american vernacular that is directly contrasting like how her writing is described by other characters and so i felt like that's just an example of how like there are just some gaping holes in it that i couldn't look past even though um it was like a quick read it was definitely as it went on it got more and more uncomfortable for me so i ended up giving this one like two and a half three stars because i think if Catherine Stockett applied her writing to a different subject, especially since she's a white woman, um, maybe a different subject that she could relate to more and not kind of assume what groups of people think. I think if she applied it to something different, like her writing could shine through more and there wouldn't be this big disconnect between what she was trying to do and what she actually did. All right, the next book I read was The Stranger by Albert Camus. Um, this is sort of about a man who is going through an existential crisis. Uh, the first lines of this book are like some of the most famous uh, like ever. So the first like two sentences are, Mama died today or yesterday maybe, I don't know. And it's definitely really interesting. It's again a really short book but it packs a punch and so at first you sort of think that it's all about this guy kind of dealing with his mother's death and sort of going through this existential crisis and feeling so numb to the world but then about halfway through an event happens that completely changes the course of the book and i will say there are some parts of this book that like broke my heart there's a particular scene where um an old man is trying to keep up with a funeral procession of like his sweetheart and because he's so old and it's so hot that day like he just can't and he's crying because he can't keep up with all of the younger people walking and so there are like some really beautiful moments in here but I think Camus' writing, it's very kind of removed and very stark, which is not the writing style that I normally gravitate towards. So I think that kept me from enjoying it as much as I know a lot of other people do. But I can still appreciate what he was doing here. And it is like a really well done piece of literature. And it definitely had lots of surprises in it for me. So I gave this one a four out of five stars. All right, the next book I read was actually a reread and it was for one of my classes and it is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I actually started this book like at the beginning of the year, but it took me about a month to read through it because I was sort of like letting myself take my time as I read these other books. But um, clearly it's a big guy. It's like 800-ish pages. And I first read this, I think when I was 16. And there were definitely parts of it I liked and parts of it I didn't. Because I think it's important to know that going into this, half of the book is not about Anna. Um, there's like half the book that's devoted to this really kind of extravagant, 
bourgeoisie love affair that's very, you know, glamorous and dramatic and that's what I thought I was getting for the whole thing. But then there's also this other part of the story about this man named Levin who is a farmer and he's sort of dealing with his own existential crises related to death, related to what it means to be Russian, Russia's relationship with Europe, all of that. And so it's really, I was able to enjoy it a lot more like this second time around because I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. Whereas when I read it a few years ago, I didn't know that so much of it would, was not gonna have anything to do with Anna. And so I really actually enjoyed it a lot this time. And it's told in like the realist style. There are definitely sections that maybe if this were written today would not be as long as they are, but because he is sort of seeking to um, portray Russian society as accurately as possible, they go on for a long time, which sometimes like means that you go through very slow sections of the book. But again, it's all super well written. I read it as part of a history class that I'm in. And so reading it from that frame of mind also helped because I could see how he was commenting on a lot of the issues of his day. So it's still really well written. I really recommend it. It is a really beautiful book. And I ended up giving this one a 4.5 out of 5. The next book I read was Beloved by Toni Morrison. This book, um, I'll be honest, I didn't know a lot about it going into it. I just knew that it was like, obviously Toni Morrison, very celebrated author, and that this book was sort of heralded as one of her best ones and that it was often one that's like read in school. I never had the chance to read it in school, but as far as the plot, I'm gonna keep it kind of vague because I think it's really good to kind of go into it not knowing what it's about because it definitely deals with a lot of magical realism and supernatural elements, but I think it's best to kind of just go in and let it kind of just reveal itself to you slowly. But I love this book. I gave it a five out of five stars. It was so beautifully written, so poignant, so heartbreaking. And there are large sections of it that are told in a very poetic style that at times makes it hard to kind of picture what's happening. But I love that because then within its abstraction, suddenly you'll get this really stark detail, a method of torture that was used against slaves or um, kind of a personal dilemma that a character went through. And because it's like that starkness is buried with kind of the more abstract and lyrical prose, it just hits you even harder. And so I really love this book. It was hard to read at times. Like there were some sections that like made me kind of sick to my stomach and I had to like put it away for a while, but it was so beautifully written and so like well realized that it makes it like, now I just want to read everything Toni Morrison has ever written. So yeah, I loved this book, definitely recommend it, but be ready to read some very difficult topics, but I still think it's a really important book to read. All right, and then the most recent book I have finished is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This has also been turned into a series on Hulu, and I love the show. I watched it back in, I think, August, and it was so good. It has Reese Witherspoon, Carrie Washington, just incredible. And the book, I will say, I was kind of thrown off by the book, because basically, to give the plot, it's set in this town called Shaker, and it's sort of the, your stereotypical suburban, like, Americana utopian 1950s kind of town. And the book is set in the 1990s. And this woman comes in named Mia with her daughter Pearl. And they're sort of like travelers, like they kind of just travel all around the United States. Mia is an artist, so she creates her art and then they move on. And they've decided that they're gonna come to Shaker and stay there for a while. And so they do, but there's sort of a lot of past trauma that Mia is dealing with and that Pearl wants to know because she doesn't know a lot about like her own family, where she's from, where her mom is from. And then as all that is happening, there's also this big dilemma going on in the town because this really affluent white family has adopted this Chinese baby. And then the baby's mother kind of comes out and wants to take her daughter back. And so there's this whole other issue going on there and this whole kind of um, conflict going on within the town where no one can agree what is best for the baby and like what it means to be a mother and if her birth mother still deserves to raise her after she gave her up. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. It deals a lot with topics of, you know, motherhood, the idea of rules and why do we follow rules? Who are rules really serving? I really enjoyed it. I will say it's told in this style called free indirect discourse, which is similar to Harry Potter where it's told in the third person and you go through all of the characters thoughts everyone's pretty equally realized i would say 
throughout the novel. However, I felt like in the show, it's so much more focused on like, for example, Mia and Pearl. So the book is definitely more of like an ensemble situation than the show was, but I still really enjoyed it. And I think that the show was able to kind of go a bit deeper with the characters that Ing created, which isn't bad because like she created such wonderful characters. So that's why I think I like the show so much is like they retained the impressiveness of those characters, but then they went deeper with it. And so because I had watched the show first, I kind of found the characters in the book to be not less realized, but you definitely get less of them because of the format that it's in. And so I actually would say that I preferred the show more similar to Big Little Lies, but I still gave this book a four out of five. It was really good, really entertaining and a really quick read. So yeah, check it out. All right, so those are the 11 books I have read so far this year. I'm gonna try to keep reading a lot this year. My goal is 40 books, but especially towards the summer and the later half of the year, I don't know how much time I'll have. So I'm trying to read as much as I can right now. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that if any of these books sounded interesting to you, you'll check them out. Um, I'll link my socials and especially my Goodreads if you wanna follow me on there. And yeah, I'm gonna try to make more YouTube videos because I do enjoy them. And I think they're a really just kind of fun activity to do. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this, then, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all of that. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.